AI is becoming crazy interesting, especially when it gets applied to security. So in this video, I want to talk about how you can take AI and actually use it inside of Vim and implement some AI prompts that is going to help you with your bug bounty hunting and not only help you become more efficient, but also it's going to help you create better word lists and also give you better leads based on the information that you have in front of you. And to do that, I have invited my friend Joseph, aka Rezo, and he's going to show us examples of how he's using AI to better his hacking skills. All right, let's jump into it. Yeah, hey Ben. So uh, I know that you've probably seen this video a hundred times at this point. It's one of my favorite videos, but I always think a lot about the Vim video that Stoke and uh, Tom Nom Nom did. And what event was it? Were you at that one? Uh, I don't remember what event it was. Maybe it was a London event. Maybe I wasn't at that one. I don't remember to be honest. Yeah, I was just up and coming at that time. I uh, was not at any live events, but I remember watching that video and being mind blown at all the things you could do inside of Vim. And so it was what set me on the path to learning them. And I've always had this dream of kind of doing like a, a little addendum, maybe not a full part two, because there's no way we could do that video justice. Tom Nom Nom is such a great teacher and knows his tools better than anyone else. But I did want to kind of incorporate a little bit of AI and uh, enhance them a little bit. So that's what we'll talk about. What do you mean by incorporating AI into Vim? What are we going to do? Yeah, so, uh, well, the first the first thing is not uh, AI related. It's just like um, kind of using commands inside of visual selections in Vim. And then after that, we're going to use that to like build on it and actually, um, yeah, use AI to incorporate, uh, you know, LLMs into our tech stack where we can call it from within Vim to uh, either generate new word lists or like lists for our words in order to comment code or to do other things like that. Okay. So I'm, I'm personally team nano, but I know I'm going to get shamed for this in the comment section. You guys can shame me all you want, but yeah, I would love to see it, man. Let's see. They give me an example. I would love to see what you have. Yeah. I can affirmatively say everything in this video cannot be done with nano at all. So, uh, I will see if there's <laughs> any comments uh, refuting my claim, but <laughs> so, yeah. So the first example is, um, the this vim visual example so i just wanted to kind of showcase i may have to make this make it a little smaller so we can see the payload at the bottom there we go so uh this is just a typical response from a request that mozilla makes if you ever proxy your traffic through the um, firefox browser you would see this it's nothing fancy or anything but it's a great example of output from things like tom non -Om's meg tool as well so you'll often have <clears throat> your headers and then you'll have some um, JSON body, JSON response in the bottom. And so if you want to process this file, you will often either be processing the top half or the bottom half. So like, let's say we're processing the top half and we don't want to actually process the bottom and we want to pipe the selection. So right now I have a visual selection. So in Vim, you can get in visual mode a couple different ways, but for visual line mode like this, it's just shift V. And then you use your movement commands to select some lines. And so right now I've selected these lines and then I can run commands on only those lines. So like if I want to sort them, you just do colon exclamation point and then sort. And so now it's going to sort those lines and only those lines. And so this is really powerful because you may have a file with thousands of lines, especially if you're working on code or something and you just want to sort like your list or something like you got a little Python list and you need to sort it. You can do it. You can do it exactly like this, right? You visual select it. Then you do a command like this and it uses that visual input as the input buffer. Yeah. And so then let's level that up the next level. One thing that I'm sure we're all doing is processing JSON, right? Maybe you want to pull out keys. Maybe you want to make it prettified, whatever. If you got a line like this, you can just select it pipe JQ. Now you've got a nice, pretty JSON it right here in Vim without ever exiting, without having to go copy and paste this anywhere. So I'm going to undo it. I'll do it again. So I'll show you. So it's shift V to go into visual line mode and select that line, then colon exclamation point, and then JQ. Um, and so you can also do, you know, if you have Gron installed or other commands, you can call that on that. And then I'm just going to revert back to that first thing I was telling you about. Let's say you wanted to cut this or run something specific uh, on only this section, you can do the same thing, right? So it's like cut, delimiter, you want colon one, uh, or I mean, you only want column one, there you go. Undo it, you only want column two this time, we'll do the same thing, but on column two. So, you, there, you know, this thing's super powerful. There's a lot you can do with it. I wanted to cover that. Um, obviously no AI involved right there. So 
this is just an example of how you can just use Vim to just feed it to other tools as you're just looking at the file inside of Vim, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. This is like, um, you know, before incorporating AI, this is just like kind of the little addendum to their video that I thought was powerful. Because the biggest takeaway I took away from that initial video was that you can run commands on the imp like using the file as the input and then outputting it back into the same Vim buffer. But I never knew until after that video, it, it just it, through my Vim exploration, I realized that you can just use individual lines as your input instead of the whole file. So I'm assuming now you're gonna, instead of piping into JQ, pipe it into something way more powerful, like some sort of an AI or something that you have been a wrapper around that. Yeah, that's right. So there's a couple way, a couple cool use cases, and I'm sure the audience will think of lots more, but I'll show you two different ones. So um, I've got a simple Python file here. I just pulled something from the internet. Obviously this could be a file where you're using it for your recon. Maybe it's calling a bunch of tools or something like that. And um, maybe you're, you pulled something up from GitHub, it's source code from a company or you're in a JavaScript file and you don't know what, what, what the code does. Um, the same way we called a command a minute ago, we'll visually select it do call an exclamation point. And now I'm using Simon W's LLM tool, but you can use just curl. You can use Daniel Measler's new fabric tool to pipe to this. And so um, I actually have an alias instead of using LLM directly, I'm going to use what's called comment. And so I'll show you this in just a minute, but what it does is it pipes that input, it comments it and then outputs it. So you can see here, I'm like, what does this while loop do? I selected it ran a comment on it, and now the AI has explained the code to me. So for people that are watching, comment, I'm assuming, is a yeah, I'll just show that you, you created. That's a wrapper around LLM that, you know, it's a prompt pretty much. That's what LLM for you. Yeah, yeah. So comment this one in the middle, right? It says add comments to this code. It uses Simon W's uh, LLM tool, but add comments to this code, respond with the code and comments. Don't alter, alter the functional aspects. Don't respond in a markdown block, et cetera, et cetera. And I've got these on my blog and I can also share a GitHub repo after the fact that we can drop in the description. But you can do this with anything, right? That's what's really neat. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it just, I think there's a, there's there's like an offensive and defensive aspect of it. You can extend your code, you can comment on code, you can review code. But I'm also curious how you can extend your knowledge with this. Yeah, so that's the that's the last example I've got, which I'm really excited about. Is like, let's say you have a word list. So I took this again just from some like uh, default request on Mozilla. I took um, some paths that I had and I just tokenized them with Tom Nom Nom's Tok tool. And so you can uh, select all of this, or you can just use the file itself. But what we're gonna do now is, I, I have it called word list two, because I've got a word list one that takes, that uses the command line instead of being in Vim. And so now what it's doing is it's gonna extend this list. So you'll see from 21 on down, it extended it. But what's really cool about this is it's specific to this application. So, you know, obviously humans have patterns. LLMs are great at spotting patterns. So if, if there had been a, actually, let's see if we can do it. It'd be really cool. Uh, let's make it API B1. I'm going to do this and just, uh, so now we're going to do the exact same thing. Um, we're going to call a word list too. And so, you know, there's clearly a pattern here, right? And when you're, when you're having it process hundreds or thousands of lines in a word list, um, you know, you might not be able to spot all the patterns, but LLMs can. So see, clearly it saw the pattern and it, and it continued it. And um, there's a lot of uh, interesting things you can do besides paths. You could also use parameters. You could use um, like post body parameters. You could um, do like different host names, even DNS. This would be really fun to do with like DNS brute forcing. If you're wanting to come up with creative DNS names that the developers would actually use based on the existing subdomains. Yeah, I think this would be really, really cool with like permutations, right? A lot of times permutations for some companies are in your typical like dev, UAT, QA. I've seen some companies that like do green one, blue, red, their colors. That's right. And if you don't have those in your um, dictionary file, it's a lot harder. That's really, really cool. Also with like the patterns, uh, there's been a couple of times that I've seen like uh, API V point, you know, one or 1.1. 1. 1. That's right. Those are a little bit harder to create than, you know, the V1, V2, V3, V4. Uh, not that it's not important, but it's just like, it gets me to think like, 
wow, there's so many times that I couldn't think of these names that this actually worked out. Funny enough, um, I was working on a vulnerability with someone with like an IAS tilde vuln, and we couldn't figure out what the file name was. We took like 45 minutes to figure it out, and then I was like, I'm going to give this to LLM. You and I were talking that same day. Yes. I was like, I wonder yeah, if yeah, LLM yeah. could catch it. After we have solved it, sure enough, I give it to the LLM path, and you know, I give them the path, and then I pipe it to LLM. It, the first thing that comes out is, that file name yeah so i could have saved myself names. an hour of time perfect <laughs> yeah. perfect use case with the is short name yeah so one really cool um kind of addendum here it's not vim related but it's exactly what we were just talking about maybe as a little extra tidbit for the audience is that you can set a um you can set a word list to run indefinitely and it'll keep coming up with really unique cool examples so um once again i forgot my do here and bash loops you got to use to um and then so i'm catting that word list that we were just looking at into my llm's word list alias and then doing done and so what this is going to do is it's going to continually create more of these right now obviously it's going to maybe create some of the same ones so what we what we can do is we can use um it's going to continue to create this we can do a sort you right you do a sort you you can pipe it to a file and just sort it later exactly yep yeah so whenever it creates this obviously sometimes it creates duplicate so i love tom nom nom's a new command so now you can just a new into a new word list um so we'll just say new word list and so now what this is going to do is it's going to keep running the same LLM command to create new um, variations of the word list and then pipe it into our new word list. Uh, it'll slow down, of course, as it stop, as it slows down creating new ones. But then what you can do is you can just tweak it to use a higher temperature, so it'll create even more variations. And now you've just created a custom word list specifically for your application that's likely um, that are likely words the developers would have used. Dude, this is insane. I wouldn't use this. The first thing I want to do right now for this call is I have a quick a quick list. Uh, a quick hits list. Yes. And I want to feed it to and see what it's going to give me. Because I've always like written them, you know, like give it a list and I go, based on this, give me 25 more, like 50 more, whatever. And it's like, sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's like a lot of duplicates. This, however, is going to be completely different because now I can actually add on stuff to that that list. And I wonder what else it gives me. I want a lot of like dot files, like, like the dot get, dot, uh, there's some of your uh, configuration files that, you know, those are the things that I want to look for. And I think this would be really interesting to find a large AI generated list and just publishing it on GitHub. So that's really, really cool, dude. And I would love to see what your wordless prompt is. And uh, for people that you know watching, uh, I think you said you're going to put it in the description, so we'll share it out as well. But that's super, super clean. Yeah, and I'm sure you, like many other hackers out there, um, have plenty of like custom Yahoo word lists where, you know, so many of their endpoints start with the letter Y, like that's something you're not going to find anywhere yeah. else on the internet. But if you feed that into this word list prompt, it's going to come out with a whole bunch of like, why ENV, why status, why, uh, you know, all those examples of all those sensitive endpoints that are essentially quick hits, but now it's like prepended with why. And of course, you know, as a human, we could do that manually, but it's going to spot so many patterns that we don't notice. So good yeah, stuff. If you man. have that already, that'd be a very, very interesting one to do. I'm excited to see what people are going to do with this video. So if you're watching this and you think you're going to be able to do something cool with this, drop it in the comment, give us some ideas. And if you want to see a part two to this, drop a part two comment and maybe I can get Rezo to come back and show us some of his uh, other research he has done with LLM. Thank <laughs> you.